Welcome to episode two of The Closest They Came, a series where we take a look back on the days when drivers, winless at NASCAR's highest level, came painfully close to etching their names into the history books. Rick Wilson would enter the 1988 Firecracker 400 from Daytona International Speedway, having made 71 starts in the Cup Series, earning nine top tens with a best finish of seventh occurring on three separate occasions up to that point. Wilson had seen previous success at Daytona, winning the 200-mile ARCA Series event in 1984. After making sporadic starts in the early 1980s, primarily for his family-owned number 62 team, he would join the upstart Morgan McClure Motorsports in 1986. They would run two partial seasons before both going full-time in Cup Series competition for the first time in 1988. Starting the event inauspiciously in the 26th starting position, it didn't take long for there to be trouble when towards the conclusion of the second lap, the seven car of Alan Kowicki had a catastrophic engine failure, losing control and collecting five other cars in turn four. Luckily for Wilson, he was just in front of the melee. Now watch again the upper right-hand corner of the screen as Kulwicki spins in his own oil. And he gathers up Cale Yarbrough as a flash fire, goes across, narrowly missing one car, slamming into the wall, but gathering up Benny Parsons. Kulwicki then careens off of the wall, slams into two more cars, gathering them up in a tremendous chain reaction accident. And then Benny Parsons' car, our onboard camera, rides through this accident. Here you can see Benny pulling to the inside, waving to the cars to slow down. He sees the smoke. Suddenly, there are cars going everywhere. He gathers up Cale Yarbrough, Kulwicki. He hits him very hard there, slides across, doesn't realize he's out of control yet. You can see the engine dead light on the instrument panel. He tries to pull the car back. Now he's watching to make sure no one else is going to gather him up. Wilson showed speed moving ahead early. Within the first 30 laps, he had moved comfortably into the top 10. Just a few laps later, he'll be fighting well within the top five, battling for the top spot with Dale Earnhardt and Morgan Shepard. Following in Earnhardt's tire tracks, lap after lap as the race progressed past the one-third point, he took the lead for the first time on lap 80. He would give it up just a few laps later to Sterling Marlin when he headed into the pits for service. He took the lead back on lap 94 from Darrell Waltrip when he would take the tide ride into the pits. At this point, Wilson would settle in behind Bill Elliott, who despite having a fast car, was holding on to the tail end of the lead lap after having started the event 38th on the grid. Back at the Firecracker 400, I'm Paul Page with Johnny Rutherford, Jack Aroot, and Jerry Punch. Rick Wilson now runs in the lead. We've had two series of pit stops, one just after 100 miles and done just a tick after 200 miles. Earnhardt sits back in second place now, followed by Shepard, Trader, Marlin, Rudd, Walter, and Hart. It's a different kind of a race, and there have been some like uh, uh, Rick Wilson who have uh, asserted himself. He's strong. He's running very strong out there today. Rick Wilson right now behind Bill Elliott, the number nine car, and the Ford and Oldsmobile hooked up there. And of course, Elliott is trying desperately to stay on the leader lap as the leader, Rick Wilson, set up right behind him. But Wilson seems content to stay in that draft and use it as that's Mike Alexander down on the inside. Well, that's, uh, you know, that's, it's, a, it's a must. If they would get a yellow right now, 
That would put Elliott in the catbird seat because he would gain a lap back. Right now he's fighting for that one lap, and that can mean the difference. So Bill Elliott, just ahead of Rick Wilson, Dale Earnhardt, out of your picture, rides in second place. Morgan Shepard, the 33 car, rides in third. They would hold steady in this pattern until lap 111, when the lap car of Ken Regan would spin just to their inside in turn two, bringing out the yellow. second yellow of the day and this was the incident rick wilson in car four was the leader but keep your eyes on ken reagan number 77 down on the inside yes you can see this is the classic paul two faster cars passing a slower car they get the draft pull him around and he does a marvelous job in saving the thing he finally gets down onto the apron slides the tires are blowing out at this point the car is sliding but he keeps it out of the racing groove he's able to get off of the racetrack, get the car back under control, and drive it back to the pits for new tires. Wilson would give up the lead to pit during the caution, stopping a second time to top off just before the race would resume, giving up further track position, but ensuring he could make it to the end. Yeah. What are you figuring, Jer? Well, I just talked to, talked to uh, Childers. He said they can go 48 laps maximum, and depending upon the caution, they're really gambling. They know they can go 48 laps. They yeah. pitted with 50 to go. Well, uh, and, here, and here's what's going on here. That's why uh, Wilson's coming back in to top the tank. They figured it out, and they were off by one lap. He would claw his way through the pack on the ensuing green flag run, re-entering the top five on lap 126. Fighting to stay on the lead lap earlier would prove serendipitous for Elliott, as he would now find himself caught up to the lead pack. Bill Elliott is just behind, and then Rick Wilson. Elliott moved up into fifth place. First time at the top five all day. He's really been struggling to come up to the front of this field. But now Earnhardt forges his way past. He started in 38 starting spots. So that, that's a pretty good move for Bill Elliott. He is asserting himself, moving now into third position. And now running in third place is Elliott, who has moved up to get ahead of Rick Wilson and Phil Parsons, who was challenging at the front, has now dropped back to fifth. And that's what we talked about at the beginning of the race. And that is that the way this restrictor plate pulls your horsepower, if you get out of line and try to make a pass, that's exactly what will happen. Sterling Marlin would slap the wall on lap 132, bringing out the third and final caution. Shortly after Green, Wilson would follow Elliott past Schrader on lap 137, moving to the front. So at this moment, as Elliott goes for the lead, he is actually racing five miles an hour faster than he qualified. And Elliott, followed by Wilson now, as Elliott pulls Wilson up into second place, Elliott takes the lead. Well, there was a chance where they, they hooked up together. Rick Wilson has been running strong all day. We have watched him number of times move out into the lead and get out by himself and just run along. So he got in behind Elliott and kind of pushed, I'm sure, and uh, went right on by. It looked like they were hooked up, making a little daylight. He would settle into second, tightly battling amongst three legends of the series in Waltrip, Earnhardt, and Elliott. Biding his time as the remaining laps clicked away, he began preparing to execute a well-timed slingshot pass on the final lap. Out in front with the help of Rick Wilson, Elliott started 38, now runs in first place, and is he looking at a win in the firecracker? Well, the spoiler could be the combination of Earnhardt and Waldrop, as here comes Earnhardt in third place, car number three, down on the inside once again. And again, Waldrop lays back just a bit and stays out of that pull. Out in front, Rick Wilson, look at him. He maneuvers right behind Bill Elliott. I think he's going to have to stay right there if he has a chance. White flag is out. One more lap. So now's the time. The last lap. If anybody's going to do anything, this is when it'll happen. The guesswork is over. Wilson moves down out of his more familiar position of directly behind Elliott. Drives a little bit on the low side. Remember, too, that depending on where they place their car relative to the car in front of them, then they can actually affect the handling of that car in front of them by spoiling the way air is coming off the back of the car. But look at Earnhardt. Earnhardt closes up behind Wilson and then has to fall back as Wilson makes his move down to the inside. He is alongside Bill Elliott. Wilson alongside, pushes a nose just ahead. Will this be the first victory for Wilson? Elliott is alongside now. Elliott forges ahead. And Elliott with a nose just ahead of Wilson at the line as they touch. Coming across to finish this race, Elliott wins the firecracker with Wilson in second place by inches. Well, there was experience against youth. You saw Rick.
Rick Wilson make his move. He did it a little bit soon, and Elliott still had the momentum he knew to be able to come up on the outside and pick him up by just a couple of feet at the finish line. What a minute. Elliott would ultimately prevail, claiming his third victory of the season and 26th of his career by a three-foot margin. Well, Jerry Punch is with the other combatant on that last lap. Jerry? Well, red paint on the side of this Oldsmobile for Rick Wilson, the hometown driver from nearby Bartow. And Rick, did you make the move a little bit too early? Well, I might have it. You know, the car was running awful good. Bill couldn't run a lick by itself, but I could run with me, me and him hooked together. We could run real good. I just waited and waited the last lap, and I thought I'd made it, but I thought Earnhardt was going to go with me. That was my big mistake there. He's been going to the bottom, going to the bottom. And I thought he would go, and if he did, I could have beat him. And I pulled up beside him and, until we got all close to the finish line. I thought I had him, but that forward just started pulling. But I want to say the Kodak Sam Oldsville team done a great job today. They kept me up front. The car worked great, and this is our best finish. And just thank the Lord for a safe race. Rick Wilson finishing second here at Daytona. The run foreshadowed future super speedway success for the Morgan McClure Racing number four car with Ernie Irvin and Sterling Marlin behind the wheel, following Wilson's departure from the team in 1989. Wilson would continue in Cup Series competition for a few more years, earning his final top five finish at Bristol Motor Speedway in 1990, driving for Ray Mock Enterprises. He would earn his final top 10 finish in 1993 during his stint driving for Petty Enterprises. Making his final start in 1997, Wilson would spend much of retirement tending his family's cattle farm, remaining largely out of the limelight outside of a 2010 appearance at the Saturday Night Showdown, where after a spirited battle with Phil Parsons, he would claim the victory. Wilson is driving that car hard. That back end's kicking out, sliding back and forth. I've seen that car loose about four or five times, Dale. This time by, there'll be three laps remaining, and here comes Wilson on the inside. Can he get him going down into one? Does he have enough Whoa. grip on the tires? They're going to run up the hill, and he does. He takes the lead. How about that move? The last lap of 1586, that would have qualified you about 15th in a nationwide race. That's what Rick Wilson just won, ran. He was on it that last lap. Well, congratulations to Rick Wilson. Though he came up just short on Independence Day weekend in 1988, Rick Wilson showed that when the right pieces were in place, he could battle toe-to-toe -to -toe with the titans of the sport.